Joining me now, Vice President Mike Pence's Chief of Staff, Mark Short. Mark, thank you for being on the show. Allie, thanks for having me back. Let me start overall with Olivia Troy and then get into some of the details here. She has had nothing but nice things to say about the vice president. She says she has a lot of respect for your boss, her former boss, that he's in a tough situation. She's a lifelong Republican who worked at the Pentagon. She supported Republicans, she says, her whole life. She was worked at the National Counterterrorism Center. Why should she not have credibility now coming out and sharing some of these stories from what she says happened inside those meetings? Well, Hallie, on February 26, when the president asked the vice president to um, uh, take over the White House Coronavirus Task Force, our team worked 24-7 to make sure that we were doing all we could to save American lives. And I think it's very disheartening and discouraging to all those people who are working tirelessly to protect Americans. You know, later today, we're going to have exciting news with yet another vaccine entering phase three trials. And it's because of the efforts of people who are doing that night, day in and day out, to get to that progress. So it's discouraging when, when Olivia, who candidly, I think the strain of the work was something that led us to say, she is a career employment of Department of Homeland Security. We asked her to go back to the department because we felt that the strain was too much for her to do the job. And, and during her Are time here, she never- Are you suggesting that she was not Hallie, capable during, of functioning in this, her, in this position? During her time here, she never expressed any of the concerns that have come out in this. And in fact, when she left, she wrote us all and said, it's been an absolute honor working closely with all of you. I have witnessed firsthand how dedicated and committed all of you have been to doing the right thing. Supporting the vice president, leading all of you in this effort has been the experience of a lifetime. And know that your unwavering commitment in the midst of the hardest times is an inspiration to me and Americans across the country. We are grateful for everything you are yeah. doing to keep us all safe. That was her departure note to all the people on the task force. She's not somebody who expressed any of these misgivings during her time here. And I think the statements that she's made are just factually incorrect. But you know, when you say she's a lifelong Republican, I guess, again, as a career government employee, that's not, that's not, that's not something we, we have as a litmus test. But in the course of her interview, she had revealed that she voted against the president in 2016. So I think it's hard to call her a lifetime Republican. And I think it's clear she has a personal agenda against the president. You say some of the things she said are factually inaccurate. Yes or no, Mark. Did the president suggest that maybe COVID is a good thing because it means less handshaking? I never heard the president say that, and I've been to each and every one of the task force meetings. I think you've heard the president did himself. Did he or did he the, not? Did he, you've heard the president himself uh, joke about uh, shaking hands on, on the campaign trail, but, you know, uh, I've never heard the president uh, give the remarks that Olivia said he, he made. Did he or did he not call Americans disgusting? No, of course not. Never heard that. Absolutely not. Do you think Olivia's just making it up then? I just want to be clear. I, Where, she's just look, pulling this out look, of thin air, out of nothing? I think that Olivia has joined uh, a, a couple of other former Homeland Security employees who are now campaigning for Joe Biden in an effort to, to defeat Donald Trump. And uh, I can't explain why she's saying the things she's saying. I've read to you what she said upon her departure. I think that all of us on the team uh, never heard her express those concerns about uh, her parent concerns about the president when she was here. Uh, all she did was express gratitude and she was frankly remorseful when we told her it was time for her to go and go back to the Department of Homeland Security. I want to ask you um, about some other news this morning, including Senator Mitt Romney now coming out and saying he will vote on a Supreme Court nominee, he says, this year. Is it your expectation, are you optimistic that that vote on the president's nominee will happen before Election Day? Uh, Hallie, we want uh, the process to move as expeditiously as possible to make sure there's, there's a fair hearing, but, but one without delay. And we think it's possible to do it before Election Day. As, as you've noted on your show, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was confirmed within 43 days of her nomination. Uh, Sandra Day O'Connor within 33 days. Justice Breyer, I believe, was 29 days. So there, there's certainly historical precedent for doing that. And I think, as you know, uh, a couple of the candidates on the president's list have recently been confirmed by the Senate and have gone through uh, lengthy confirmation hearings. And so, so the information there has already been, uh, been, been processed by the United States Senate. So am I hearing you say that, yes, you are optimistic it'll get done before Election Day? Is we, that we, how you're anticipating this We will this continue go? to encourage this happen as quickly as possible. I'm not going to try to, to, to place odds on, on the Senate uh, ability to, to uh, meet a timetable. But I, I do think that there is time to complete it before Election Day. We do think that it should move as quickly as possible. And, and certainly we're encouraged with the momentum that we're seeing on Capitol Hill.
Obviously, there has to be a nominee before that can happen. Our reporting uh, in conversations that I've had with a number of people in and around the White House indicates that Amy Coney Barrett is a favorite for that nomination. Barbara Lagoa also in the mix there. Is it your sense that the president will nominate Amy Coney Barrett uh, on Saturday? Uh, Hallie, I, I appreciate the question, but that's entirely the president's decision. Uh, he's told you that he'll make a decision um, by Saturday, make an announcement on Saturday. Uh, they're both incredibly qualified candidates. And is, again, both of them have been recently confirmed by the United States Senate. Uh, so uh, uh, he has is it important? a... I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Mark. Is it no, important okay. to he's, take he's into account the have, comfort have level that people may have like, with the Senate? I think is, it, it, uh, is it something that you're considering, the idea that Senator McConnell and others are comfortable with Amy Coney Barrett in a way that they might not have a relationship with, for example, Barbara Lagoa? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I think, again, that uh, the Senate has confirmed both candidates recently when the president nominated them for appeals courts. And I think that uh, um, uh, the, the encouragement we have is that uh, senators have looked at the historical precedent, recognized that. Uh, when the party in power is the same as the president's party, there's been a consistent uh, process for confirming those nominees. And uh, as we've said before, 29 times from George Washington to Barack Obama, when there's been an open vacancy in election year, there's been 29 nominations. And the ma vast majority when the party is in power, 19 of those, 17 of the 19 are confirmed in only two cases were ones where people had to withdraw. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.